a reading from the book of Genesis. Abram was very rich in livestock, silver, and gold. Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support them if they stayed together. Their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. There were quarrels between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and those of Lot's. At this time, the Canaanites and the Perizzites were occupying the land. So Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me, or between your herdsmen and mine, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land at your disposal? Please separate from me. If you prefer the left, I will go to the right. If you prefer the right, I will go to the left. Lot looked about and saw how well watered the whole Jordan plain was as far as Zoar, like the Lord's own garden or like Egypt. This was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot therefore chose for himself the whole Jordan plain and set out eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram stayed in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled among the cities of the plain, pitching his tents near Sodom. Now the inhabitants of Sodom were very wicked in the sins they committed against the Lord. After Lot had left, the Lord said to Abram, Look about you and from where you are. Gaze to the north and the south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your descendants forever. I will make your descendants like the dust of the earth. If anyone could count the dust of the earth, your descendants too might be counted. Set forth and walk about in the land through its length and breadth, for to you I will give it. Abram moved the tents and went on to settle near the terebinth at Mamre, which is at Hebron. There he built an altar to the Lord. Verbum Domini. He who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. He who walks blamelessly and does justice who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribes against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be disturbed. Dominus Fobiscum, 
Lexio Sancti Evangelii Secundum Mateum. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot, and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction, and those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constricted the road that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Verbum Domini. Today's Gospel from St. Matthew continues a section wherein Jesus gives us various precepts in regards to how to live our daily lives in conformity with his teachings. And today's Gospel can be summed up by just talking briefly about two categories, respect for holy things and also the so-called golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So again, in today's gospel passage, Jesus uses a popular saying to teach prudent discernment concerning the use of holy things. That is, that they are not to be taken advantage of. Such holy things regard, for example, the word of God itself, the sacraments, sacramentals, and even persons the dignity of the human person. The church has always heeded this warning, especially in the sense of respect with which it administers the sacraments, most notably and most especially the Holy Eucharist, because whereas the other six sacraments effect the grace they signify, the Eucharist is what it signifies. It is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to be careful concerning the use of holy things. If such an admonition is abused, then the sin of sacrilege comes into play. The Catechism of the Catholic Church in number 2120 gives us the definition of sacrilege, and it's tied into this teaching of the proper use of holy things. Number 2120 of the Catechism states, Sacrilege consists in profaning or treating unworthily the sacraments and other liturgical actions, as well as persons, things, or places consecrated to God. Sacrilege is a grave sin, especially when committed against the Holy Eucharist, for in this sacrament, the true body of Christ is made substantially present for us. So today's gospel really provides us with an opportunity for a self-evaluation of how we treat holy things, either wittingly or unwittingly. Hence the greater need and reason for one to have the moral certitude, for example, that he or she is in a state of grace when receiving the Most Holy Eucharist thus receiving the Holy Eucharist worthily as opposed to unworthily. That is, a holy communion as opposed to what? As opposed to a sacrilegious communion, huh? So the confidence that we have knowing that we are God's sons and daughters in no way exempts us from the sincere and profound respect we should imbue our relations with God and holy things. Because we're regularly, faithfully practicing Christians does not exempt us from a regular self-evaluation of how we treat uh, 
holy persons, places, and things. Uh, For example, and these are just a few examples, uh, leaving Mass early without due reason, being very careless in regards to arriving at Mass on time, We've already talked about the importance of being in a state of grace to receive communion worthily, that is, so that it be definitely a holy communion as opposed to a sacrilegious communion. Uh, Something as simple as a Bible in the home, not in a place of prominence, not in the room where the family most gathers, even recreationally, but instead in in a back guest bedroom that doesn't even get used on a shelf with dust on it. And this is the only Bible in the house, and that's where it happens to be located. You know, we need to reevaluate these things. Huh? We, we need to see a, a proper respect for holy things as Jesus admonishes us today. Uh, jokes about uh, holy persons, for example, jokes that uh, make little or belittle uh, the lives of the saints or the blessed. I once heard a very crude joke involving Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Uh, You know, that's that's not virtuous. That's not something we should do, even as Christians. We should not make light of holy things, holy persons, holy places, consecrated to God. Verse 12 of today's Gospel gives us the time-honored and so-called golden rule. So always treat others as you yourself would like them to treat you. That is the meaning of the law and of the prophets. In other words, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, it was very popular in the middle 1970s, a certain t-shirt that said, do unto others, then split. Okay. Do unto others. Yeah, I see some of you older ones sh- laughing and, and Shaking your head yes as I say that. Do unto others, then split. Huh? Well, that's not the Christian perspective. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. The golden rule gives us a guideline to realize our obligations towards and the love we should have for others. This rule of conduct is especially completed by Jesus' own new commandment which is given to us later on in St. John's Gospel, John chapter 13, verse 34, where he teaches us to love others as he himself has loved us, wherein he tells us, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. The teaching of the Twelve Apostles, an ancient second century document, also says something very similar almost verbatim. It states, All things whatsoever that thou wouldst not wish to be done unto thee, do thou also not to another. So in this ancient second century document known as the Teaching of the Apostles, it's worded in the negative, but it still has given us the same exact meaning. All things whatsoever that thou wouldst not wish to be done unto thee, do thou also not to another. And an early church saint, St. Aristides, in his work titled An Apology or Defense for the Christian Faith, in chapter 15, second century again, he states this, Whatever the Christians do not wish to be done to them, they do not do to another either. Whatever the Christians do not wish to be done unto them, they do not do to another either. So, good teaching, both from sacred scripture, from sacred tradition, and of course from the Magisterium of Holy Mother Church, concerning uh, the respect for holy persons, holy places, holy things, and also the importance of living by the golden rule. That is a golden rule taught by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ himself. God bless you.